Right then, now let's talk about <laughs> your relegation team. Yeah, well, no, we're not relegation. We're not. We're not even in contention for that, which would make things exciting, <laughs> wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be great to be down there, you know, like save ourselves on the last day, like the way that Everton did? I was sort of jealous of. Remember when they beat Palace, Lampard on the pitch and that. <laughs> no, we're we're just we're just. Well, I don't even know really. We're just so uninspiring. We got a victory against Sheffield United, which is obviously good news. But then you wake up to the headlines that Chelsea are going to try and sell Conor Gallagher. And you kind of go, why? Yeah, well, I mean, he's been our best player this season. He's been, he's been one of like, our most consistent. Cole Palmer has been our best player. Is, can, could that not be... And I think Conor Gallagher is a better player. So mm. I'm not comparing the two. But could it not like be the McTominay thing? Where you go, actually, McTominay has been their best player. When you look, you deep dive into that, it's not true. N- N- Conor Gallagher's our captain when Rhys James is injured. Like, Conor Gallagher has been our most consistent player this season. Like, I think, I think we can say that Gallagher shouldn't be good enough to play for Chelsea. Like, he shouldn't be as... We shouldn't be as reliant upon him as we are. But we don't choose it. And he is he is that mm. important to us. Uh, if Chelsea were the Chelsea of old, obviously, a Conor Gallagher-type player, when Michael Essien and Frank Lampard were on midfield, a Conor Gallagher player doesn't get near that midfield. No. Because players as good as Raul Morelles weren't really getting in the team. No. You know, when when Chelsea had Michael Ballack desperately trying to break into the team, obviously Conor Gallagher wasn't good enough. Mm, yeah. When Chelsea had John Obi Mikel sitting on the bench, obviously he wasn't good enough to break in. But the, the reality is today that Conor Gallagher is a better player for us than than Enzo Fernandez. Moises Caicedo, I thought, looked very good against uh, Sheffield United. He had his best game for us. But again, I think Conor Gallagher has been more consistent. Yeah. So so yeah, we beat we beat. Pally, uh, sorry, we beat Sheffield United. We beat the team that have four points. We beat the team that were bottom of the league. But it does still feel so flat, more because of the ownership than than anything else. Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to the club. And we are sponsored by Super 6. And listen to this. Super 6 could be giving away a million pounds at the weekend. And it could be going to you. If you play Super 6, the link's in the description below. You have to be over 18. It is free to play. And it's this simple. Six scores, predict them correctly. And you could win one million pounds at the weekend. It has rolled over. It has gone big. It is massive. So make sure you're getting involved in downloading Super 6. And you could be a millionaire this Christmas. Now, Enjoy this clip. There's obviously some change in the capping of the, the length of contract given to players these days. Do you think that's you know, a direct relation to what Chelsea have done? Yeah, I think I think it is, isn't it? Because I think what Chelsea were trying to do was was make a situation work financially for us that yeah. was that was kind of tapping into the fact that we are that we're a very wealthy club. You know, we can give these long term contracts and, and we can spread Commit the pay money out. and yeah. Are you not gutted that you've... Look, I'm not saying... You, obviously, it's not cheating because it was part of the rules. But you've spread all this money out to get a load of money in, a load of money on investment very, mm. very quickly on players. For the kind of players that you've signed, it's like... Well, you could have done that for Osman. You yeah, could have yeah. done that for, like, you know, two yeah, no, many I mean, or something. The, owner, like, the ownership is so is so bad. Because is Osman on, on the club bingo now? The amount of time he pops up. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's no, like they've spread the, better and it's like now no, they've changed the rules. They've they've shut the loophole out and they've signed... But also, and Enzo to, to finance the loophole... We've had to allow, you know, you look at the players that have left. Mason Mount has Mount's got, gone. yeah, like the amount, yeah. the amount of players that have left the club that you didn't want to leave. And I think a lot of them as well, you know, when you look around, like loads of the players that aren't at Chelsea anymore, that are doing the business for other clubs, will be doing really well at Chelsea. Hmm. Like I'd love Liveramento. Oh. You know what I mean? Like he would, he Even would be... Lewis, yeah, they'd be good players for Chelsea. So no, it's, we're, we're, we're a shadow of our former self and... Yeah, we beat Sheffield United. Uh, we can't really read. Are there any um, noises in the ground towards the ownership? It's happening a bit. There are some groans. We're not. Sadly, we're not quite on a. We're not quite at a bowly out protest on the Fulham Road. When we are, I'll be there. Because there's like, it's not a lot of fans coming. are like their their idea for protest. Look, at Manchester United, for example. There's been fans, a large nucleus of fans, protesting since 2005 against mm. the Glazers. But then there are some people who, when they don't get the transfers they want, that's when they'll go off. Oh, mm. You know, are yeah. you, because you've spent a lot of money on transfers, is there that you, nucleus I of think, fan base that will actually... I think the breaking point will, will come. I think there'll be two things that will, that will push Chelsea fans into protest. And when Chelsea fans mobilised, we're good at this. You know, Super League, we were good. 
The two things that will happen will be... Is that you on the full of old chatting at Peter Check? That was me. <laughs> Should Peter Check shout at me? He's, he told me to F off. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I, he's one of my heroes. He told me to F off. You should go to a hockey game and just, just boo, boo him. <laughs> boo him. Get a banner that says Peter Check, turn it upside down. Hold it up upside down. Yeah, he, he told me to F off. I didn't say anything to him, but then we did have an argument. Um, I just questioned his moral compass. But anyway, yeah. So look, we, we, we were excellent... Uh, around the Super League and I was there a decade before that when Roman Abramovich tried to get us out of Stamford Bridge we were excellent around that the say no CPO campaign kept Chelsea at Stamford Bridge I think that the, I think that people will be really furious if, if Gallagher goes so that could be the genesis of, of, of an issue but I actually think it will come when this lot and I believe I don't, I don't know for a fact that this happens but I believe that it will I think this lot will try and get us out of Stamford Bridge at some point and when that happens, that's when the that's when the process. Where are you going down, Battersea? No, Battersea's sold out now, isn't it? But yeah, like yeah. Battersea's where Abramovich tried to take us, and that's when, mate. You know, there would have been a day when uh, I think that all of the powers that be at Chelsea in like 2013 would have been so aware of like not only me, like there's some you know Chelsea fans who dedicated their life to keeping Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, but they would have been looking like Roman Abramovich would have been looking at this list of names, going. Who are these people? You know, like he thought that he could just do what he wanted, get the get the votes, and get Chelsea out of Stamford Bridge, mm. and it didn't work. You know, we had a big banner and a say no CPO banner. Mm. So I think this lot will try again to get us out of Stamford Bridge, and I think that will be the moment that it comes. When I look, I'm one of these people, and they talk about Old Trafford and potentially moving. Mm. So I go nah, never build on that or whatever you want to mm. do. Make that bigger, cool, but I don't want to leave. Mm. But is having a bigger... Could you have a bigger stadium where you currently are? No, Because it's, it's I, hard I, to build up there. Right? I don't know enough about the history of United, right? To, to know about how much Old Trafford means yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to United fans. In fact, you know when you were Thornton Heath? Yeah, Newton Heath. Newton Heath, sorry. Thornton Heath in South London. <laughs> <laughs> when you were Newton Heath, did you play at Old Trafford? Yeah, and then Old Trafford got bombed during the war and then we right. rebuilt. So you have, have you ever played at a, ga- a ground that isn't We used yours? to play at Main Road and stuff. Right, okay. So maybe maybe the like feeling, that. and again, I'm talking way out of turn because I don't know and it's important to only listen to United fans about this, but maybe because you've played at other grounds, the significance well, of Well, that was at, because of the war. Hi, yeah. No, but just simply Big, the fact it, that it's happened. Yeah. So Chelsea and Stamford Bridge, Chelsea only exists because of Stamford Bridge. Like the ground wasn't made for us. The ground was made for Fulham. The point I was trying to make is like having a bigger stadium is more beneficial to your club, right? It's another reason, mate, we haven't got the support. Like Chelsea don't really? have... No, we haven't got... Like, you know all this talk, 70,000. Chelsea don't have 70,000 fans can, week in, week out. Spurs, Spurs, fill out. 60K, Spurs, Spurs fill out there. Tottenham, Tottenham... Yeah, you're a bigger club than Spurs. That's a good we're, point. No, we're a bigger, a bigger club, yes. A bigger, a bigger brand, absolutely. But... What's Tottenham's ground now? 60? I thought it was 70. What's Stamford Bridge currently? Like 40? 40 42. 40, 42. 42. I think they gamble that you get 70 in, oh, in the tourists. We're, we're not 70,000. But I think they are with tourists. That's we, the aim. No, I'm not saying that's right. But the problem is, you, mate, that's a lot of tourists week in, week out. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we haven't got the support for that. Honestly, I think Chelsea are a 60,000 capacity ground, which is what the Emirates is now, say. I think, I think Tottenham have just gone a little bit bigger than the Emirates. I think they've gone a couple of thousand bigger than the Emirates. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just to, to be able point. to say that they can make, yeah, just to make the point. So Tottenham haven't gone 70. 60,000 Chelsea, I think we'd fill. I think we'd, we'd do that. But Chelsea aren't, Chelsea aren't a 70,000. The reason I brought that up is because a big thing for clubs nowadays is yeah, your hospitality turnover, revenue, revenue and yeah, all yeah. that adds up, right? And mm. if you've got a, Owners that are spending billions on transfers that mm. are amortised for yeah, seven yeah, years. Yeah. You're going to need some income to be increased, right? <laughs> yes. Chelsea can't really expand Stamford Bridge beyond 60 at best. And it's really difficult. Because remember, like this is part of the beauty of Stamford Bridge. It's in the heart of Fulham Broadway. Like it, It's exactly where it should be. It's right in the heart of the manor, which is perfect. Therefore, though, because of that... You can't buy up the houses around it because they're six million pound houses. Mm. You can't buy. Mm-hmm. You know. You know the way that maybe in certain other grounds, certain other teams, they could buy up the streets. Yeah. Well, City did that, didn't they? You could buy the up the streets. You Etihad can't buy campus. up the streets at a Fulham Road. They're six no, million pound a house. Of course, of course. It's yeah. one million pound a flat. Yeah. So, you, so it makes no sense. So, ultimately, I think the club will want to move because they don't really care where it is, do they? And that's when you could turn. And that's when I think the fans will turn. On the pitch, how are you feeling? I think we're crap. I Why? really. I what really do you think, mate? I, I look w- at it and I go from the outside looking in. I watch less Chelsea than you. Yeah. 
like I thought Enzo was doing okay, weirdly, and you yeah. you obviously corrected no, me on dreadful. that. Yeah. He dropped yesterday. But one of the things I do is I go, I don't know about Boovy, what you think, but I look at Charles and I think they've brought so many players in at once, a new manager, you're going to need some time to just cut, you know, yeah. cut the weed from the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Arteta went in, took a season, finished eighth, got rid of some players and, mm. you know, whatever. Does, does he not need that time? Pochettino? Yeah. Yeah, I think he does. Look, I, I haven't been particularly inspired by Pochettino. I don't think he's particularly good. I don't think I've, I don't think we've improved. I don't think he's improved any player. I don't think we're any better this season than we were under Graham Potter. I don't think we're better than we were under Frank Lampard. And in fact, I saw these things. I don't know how much you read into it. But the win rate was better under Lampard than it is under Pochettino. So... I don't, wow. I don't... That's damning, isn't it? Yeah. I don't like Pochettino massively. I'm not on board with him at all. I don't think he's done much well. But I also annoyingly have to admit, <laughs> sacking him would be bonk. I like that, though. Because sacking him would be It'd be bonk. easy for you to go, <laughs> get, yeah. get his first. I can't, think, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't have been saying that. I can't have been saying that. You employ a Tottenham manager and you become Tottenham. You know, it's kind of what happens. And also, I don't think he's very... I don't think he's very good. He hasn't improved one single player. Not one player has improved under him. Literally not one. What do you think about Chelsea when you see him? No, I think I think they need time. I think he needs two seats. Look, if Arteta deserves the opportunity to finish back-to-back eighth and win an FA Cup, I think Pochettino deserves the same leniency. Can, can I ask you about that, though? Because people seem to always go to Arteta, don't they? You know, for the example, if you're going to try and come up with an example of why you give somebody time, yeah. the, the example is, is Arteta because mm. they did it and... It's worked to a degree. They haven't won a league yet. When they, when they've won a league, it's really worked. But yeah, yeah. they they haven't won a league yet, so it's kind of working. Hmm. But there are countless examples of persevering with the wrong manager not working. So simply Arteta, Arteta is an example of it potentially working. But like, you can't just employ that philosophy, that principle. Stick with the manager. Give the manager hmm. time because it happened to work for Arsenal. Or it happens to be also working a lot for of Arsenal. people criticised at the time. Mm. By saying, if he, if he was at Man United or Chelsea and finished 8th, eight, eight, he'd be gone a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether, whether that's but, but right like, or wrong, I think I at least know. a season. I, I, and the thing with Chelsea is, I don't think there's many... A season, yeah. I think he's been I think he's been handicapped by the fact that he's actually working with really average players. Yeah, Not that's a single world-class player that he can hang <laughs> his hat on. And we saw, we talk about Harry Kane at Spurs. Was it Harry Kane that got him over the line with, mm. with big performances for Spurs, getting into the Champions League and getting to the final? Mm. Give Chelsea a couple of world class signings, and he could maybe influence that. Being more of a football man than Todd Mate, Bowley is, do, do, do and you know then you've got a nucleus there. Do, Cole Palmer's decent. I tell you the problem Chilwell's with that theory. There, you know. I tell you the problem with that theory. I was listening to a really interesting interview with you know Julian Laurent. Mm, yeah, he was talking obviously far more eloquently than I ever could, but he was speaking about Paris Saint Germain and Pochettino at Paris Saint Germain. God, it was damning. Yeah, yeah, it was damning. can't handle big personalities. So you know yeah, you're saying, that, yeah. well, well, at the moment he's got an average squad, and therefore he's struggling. Mate, Julian Laurent was basically going, he had the best squad he could have dreamed of. Yeah. Messi on one side, Mbappe through the middle. Neymar. Neymar on the other side. And Laurent was going, couldn't deal with that. So we're saying here, he's got a terrible squad and he can't handle it. Laurent was saying he had a brilliant squad and he Not for the sake it. of just picking my argument, because it's a valid point, but I actually do think PSG is a really bad example. I agree. I think do you know what I mean? But, but then Chelsea... It's had not like point. managing De Bruyne at Man no, City and no, he's fucked but it Booth, up. The problem, with us, the problem with that is... Chelsea are also that. So, you know, if you go, well, Paris Saint Germain's a basket case of a club. Of course. Yeah. You're like, well, yeah. okay, so are Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. So are Chelsea. Yeah, but Chelsea but weirdly, that so. has got Chelsea's success. No, but we weren't. <laughs> not, we, under, not under we, Bowley, we, no, we the weren't a basket there. case with, with Abramovich. What we were, it was. You were ruthless. We were Calculate. a ruthless. We were, we were a winning machine. We were, a, we were a machine that was set up to win and only win and strive for the best. So, whenever the best player became available, we signed him. We're not that anymore. Yeah. We aren't striving to be And the I best. think there was a clear, from the top to the bottom, a clear message of we want to be the best. Yeah. We want to challenge. We demand to be. Yeah. Demand to And I be. think that yeah. shows. When you've got owners that demand that. Yeah. I look at Newcastle. Look, their team hasn't changed massively from before Eddie Howe got it. Yeah. And now it has. It but, has. you know, at the start, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Recent, yeah. like when, like, as soon as that ownership change and the sea yeah. change and the yeah. fans are on board and everything, it, mm. it takes you along a little yeah, bit. Foot, football fans are fickle and, and football owners are fickle. And it's like, if you've got a striker that scores 25 goal, league goals a season up front and Nicholas Jackson scored a few, but, and you're fourth in the table right now, things are looking rosy. Mm. You don't have any natural goal scorers in the side. I don't count Jackson as that. You'll never be a world-class no. striker in my book. You've got Palmer there. I think he's got world class potential. Yeah, he's very thin. He's b- brilliant for us. Yeah. Very thin. He, so he'll be buying him back soon. Yeah, buy he, back he, also, he, hopefully. He has actually been, he has been a breath of fresh air, Cole Palmer. 
He really yeah. has. He's just been a joy to watch, a joy to watch the development. So graceful on Can the ask, ball. What is his best position? I think I, I don't think it position... exists. I think he'd be a ten, and I don't think people uh, can play ten these playing, days. He's playing on the on the on the on the. Yeah, but it's the thing. I always see him in a number of. Yeah, he, he kind of drifts a bit. False nine. He's, left, he's not right. bad through the middle in in that kind of false nine way. He, coming in from coming in from the right, he's very good as well. He's just he's he's the best player in the team by a mile. Everything yeah. good that Chelsea do goes through him. No, I don't. I'm not mm. disregarding that. I've just never felt like I quite know where his position. Maybe that is because he's a ten. Do, and do, as a do result. you know? Do you know what he's a little bit like? He's a bit like what everybody says Kai Havertz is meant to be like he's a little bit like that like the player that he reminds me of a lot not necessarily in the just in kind of his grace and the silk that he brings to the team Oscar do you remember Oscar mm. who played for us like he went over to China like he's yeah, a beautiful, classy, but... beautiful footballer yeah like really really good easy on the eye didn't have enough and a lot of times you know, didn't, certainly didn't have enough venom and enough fight and enough desire but he was, a, he was an artist yeah and I think Cole Palmer's got an element of that but he's got the scrap and that as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's an edge to him. There's definitely, mm. he's at Withenshaw, isn't it? So where do you think, what what, what do you think this season is about for Chelsea? Like, Nothing. what do you want your goals to be? Nothing. I know you can't really set a goal for like, win the league, but what is what do you want to see Chelsea looking like in May? Uh, uh, mate, I, I don't think that there's any genuine ambition at the club anymore in terms of what the team is supposed to do. Yeah. Because well, the, the the team aren't set up, the team aren't built to succeed. The team are built to make money. The team are no, built to increase the value of the club. when you say that, right? Like we're not trying to win. We're not no, trying to, to build a team to, to increase win value. Match. You have to be successful. No, we you don't. You have to have some semblance of success. Maybe not winning the Premier League, but you have to have some form of. You can't just finish Champions League football and mm. expect everyone's values to go. Up, Unl right? Unless no, you can. You can. There is a world where you can, because football clubs. The, the tide in football, the tide in European sport is rising. Yeah, point, the amount of money in European sport, particularly Premier League football, is rising exponentially, well, irrespective eighth of the and eighth, I don't know why we keep saying that. Sorry, mm. it's just stuck in my head. If you finish eighth and then tenth, mm. you're not getting more money for Moises Caicedo after that. There is a world where you can. Hear me out. Because if you bought a house in London, in in 1988, just hear me out. Yeah, right? yeah, you buy on. a house in London in 1988 in a terrible manner, Hackney. <laughs> you buy a house in Hackney in 1988, it will cost you £50,000, right? Let's say you get massively ripped off and you spend £80,000 on that £50,000 house. Today, that house is worth £1.8 million. Anyway. You're talking about decades of progress. Yeah, but well, you're also talking about decades within, of the it economy rising. It would have been within a decade, though. It was ten years later. Oh, oh fine, ten, well, so a decade. Ten years but later. But a house if, never if you, stops being a house, right? If you bought a house in 1993, yeah, in in a bad area, yeah. and you got ripped off for it, you paid double. Yeah, but the asset, the time, the asset just sits there. Caicedo yeah, yeah, yeah. is an asset. Is someone that is liable, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone that is liable, liable to actually he's play. Depreciating asset. Yeah, he's depreciating every no, but every it's performance. A club. The club. They. It's think, not about individual. You think they want to sell the club? In ten years, I think they want to double their money on the club, not on the club. Yeah, 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 and and the and the players are all the, just the value of the club. That's why we're buying young, only young. We're buying players that will yeah, that improve. Sense. We're only buying young. We've yeah. got this policy. You know, Chelsea just turned down James Madison because he was too old. We turned him down. Like, we didn't want him. If Chelsea wanted to improve as a football team, mm. you obviously sign Madison for 40 million quid, right? Yeah, yeah. Kane at 30, whatever. Yeah, you, you go for Kane and you try and make it work. You, you certainly go for Declan Rice if you want to improve the football team. What you don't do is sign a geezer that's had a purple patch for Villarreal for 30 million. And then and then young, up and coming, Lavia, Caicedo, Mudrik, who no one had heard of. I'm sorry, like people pretend, but no. This is made up. Yeah. Like they are trying to increase the value because they've overpaid for the club and in a decade's time they want to sell and double their billions. Double their that's their plan. Thing they're going about it the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. but they're not. They're they not. should have brought a house. No, they're, not, they're, not <laughs> going, they're not going about it the wrong Drop way. The they're not going about it the wrong way. What they are is they're venture capitalists, so they're yeah. trying to do it differently. They're trying to yeah. do... They're, they're people who make loads of money. Like they're, they're always the cleverest people in every room they're in. But it seems illogical to us because we view it through the lens of football, not through the lens of business. Once saying, if you're the cleverest person in every room you're in, you're in, you're the, in the wrong room. room. It's like me in this room. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Let's not go back to the IQ chat that we did the other day. 